Hi, I'm Cassandra and I've chosen to associate symmetry with nature. Um, I aim this particular presentation at teachers uh, so that they can teach it in their classrooms. I'd probably aim this activity in particular to year threes, although it's quite easy to complicate it and um, expand it to older year levels. Um, it's important to know first off that a lot of children suffer from anxiety when doing maths. Um, it's a lot of pressure and it can be quite quite stressful for them and I know I've been there so um, that's why I think it's important to make some of the lessons quite fun. Um, on top of that you've got Piaget's theory um, which states that action shapes thinking so that's what we're doing today we're going to be doing an activity that incorporates their thinking as well um, and gets them to kind of go out into the world thinking about what they've done in the classroom and how it associates with their world around them so um, that's really important to know first off um, this activity is also really good because um, you can use a lot of resources that you have around you already within a school base so um, most schools will have access to water-based paint, um, paper, paintbrushes, smocks, water, that sort of thing. So it's quite easy to adapt this to any lesson. Um, particularly for this one, I would begin the lesson through um, going through some images and having students identify which of these images, um, of course, related to nature. So butterflies, flowers, um, birds trees, anything like that, as long as they're symmetrical, um, and have them identify whether or not they are. So that's important to start that off to organise a little bit of an introduction for them. And once they have um, displayed that they're comfortable enough with the, the content, then they can move on to this fun, fun, fun part of the lesson. So um, all you need to do is start off with a um, piece of paper, um, just fold it in half like I've done. It's important to note that you don't have to do it horizontally, you can do it long ways as well. Um, so. That way they've got a little bit of scope as well. They can kind of do it in their own way. Um, I have used some different colours here. Um, and like I said, you can adapt any of these lessons to higher year levels or um, different different lessons, so art. And I've incorporated some mixed colours in here, not only just primary colours. I've also got a gold, which is metallic. So you could also incorporate that into your art lessons as well. Um, once they've done this, you can kind of get them to reflect on their own pieces and just get them to identify which are primary colours, etc. in there. So um, I've just outlined a picture of a butterfly. I know everyone's done this before, probably, in terms of teachers who have. Um, I know I've done it before, so... Um, It'll be quite easy for, for teachers to adapt this quite well. So, um, I just did a butterfly because it's easy and it's kind of got a lot of space to actually do some patterns and things. So, I'm going to start off by just doing some, some basic colours around the edges. Um, it's important to note that you don't need to put too much paint on there because it will um, go everywhere if you put too much on there. But you need enough on there so that you can squish it to the other side which is important too because that's obviously the basis of this lesson so you can encourage students to mix paint if they like and to put dots and lines and patterns on there which is obviously another aspect of a mass phenom phenomenon so that's important to incorporate that as well um, just get them to think outside the box a little bit with how they're executing this activity um, once they've done kind of some basic colouring um, maybe get them to do um, if you've had the lesson about contrasting colours, maybe get them to add some of those. Um, just, to, just to challenge their thinking a little bit more. And um, obviously they can associate that with the world around them as well. Um, and identify that. So once you've done that, you can just fold your piece of paper over. Um, just pat it down so it's um, sticking quite well. You'll probably feel a bit of paint move around if you've got too much on there. So once you've kind of outlined all around it. Um, you can just separate the pieces of paper and there's your image there. So um, I didn't quite put enough paper on there so it has kind of stuck a little bit. But that's the essence of basically what you want to achieve from it. So it, it's quite an abstract bit of art and I like that. So you can also it, you know expand to what types of art you're using. Um, once you've done that you can go around it with black text or cut it out, hang it around the classroom and just let children be prideful of what they've identified as symmetrical in their world. So that's really important as well. Um, you can use just you know cool colours and um, bright contrasting colours.
primary colours, warm colours mainly, which I've used here. This is an example of a long ways one, which is a snake. So, you know, if students want to really get involved with using their, their imaginations, that's a really good way to do that as well. Um, so, I really like this activity. It's, it's really easy to incorporate over different year levels. And I think it's really simple just to identify what symmetry is with younger year levels as well. Um, in a fun manner, really. So, that's all it's about.